Um, I'm really excited to hear Justin speak. Uh, Justin Nelson is our next speaker. And last night I was totally Instagram stalking him, uh, trying to figure out what to say. And I was super impressed by what he's done. Um, so I've been told that he started in real estate when he was 17 years old. Okay, when I was 17 years old, I think I was babysitting and like maybe made like $8 an hour. Um, but this dude, Justin, he was starting in real estate and he quickly became a top producing agent. And in his first year in real estate, he made a gross commission of $320,000. Justin, if this was when you were 17, then I have totally failed. Um, but uh, you can tell us when that was. But that is amazing. And he says in his, his notes here that that was mainly from using social media hacks to grow his business. Um, I thought I was the queen of social media, but he may have just passed me up here. Um, so in 2019, Justin started coaching other agents and he was really coaching them how to get more time back, just like Shaheen had said, in their life. And he did this through coaching them on virtual assistants. And through that, that's how Sphere Rocket was born. Um, I'm really excited to hear more about that and how I could potentially use this in my life. But um, anyways, Justin, I will not continue to talk because I'm might take everything you have to share. So y'all give Justin a round of applause. I'm excited to hear from him. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna not use the mic, that's okay. Can you guys all hear me okay? Yeah. Cool, so the reason I'm not gonna use the mic is I like to be very interactive and it's just a distraction for me. So uh, one of the things that I got told this morning as I was leaving my house at 2 a.m. is that I'm starting to get gray hairs. Uh, I'm only 26, so I guess that's what 11 years is. So I've actually been in the business since I was 15. I started off as an inside sales agent at 15, cold calling. Might have been illegal. I don't even know the rules back then. <laughs> so Glenn, Glenn's here, a big inspiration of mine. You didn't hear that at 15. I was still part of EXP at 15, um, where I'm at now. So um, some of my story was already shared. I want to keep it really brief. Obviously, I'm a sponsor of this event. We sell virtual assistants, but that's not really what I want to get at here. What I want to get out today is I just want to be a regurgitation of what my clients are seeing in the market and what they're using their VAs for. Is that fair? I don't care if you use our VAs. I'm actually going to show you ways to also not use our virtual assistants if you want to go other routes. So don't, be, just don't feel like I'm about to sell you something. I just want to regurgitate. So uh, my background and what I love to do is speak. So I've been speaking for about four years now. Um, started Sphere Rocket about three years ago, um, almost three and a half now. And over that time, we now have 5,000 full-time employees in the Philippines um, with about 3,000 clients across the U.S. About 75% roughly right now are real estate agents, real estate brokers, um, and teams. So that's going to kind of be what I go through today. Uh, a lot of times people think I have no U.S.-based team. I do have a U.S.-based team. Um, but a majority of my team is located in the Philippines. I got about 100 on my personal staff. So a lot of the lessons I'm going to teach you are my failures, things I have learned as a leader. I promise you the leader I was at 18, no one would have wanted to work for me. There's a reason at 18, 19, 20, 21, I lost my assistance. A lot of it was ego. A lot of it was things that I've learned over time. So my story, there was me at 15, 16 years old, old calling in my office with like Keller Williams at the time. A lot in between. I don't know how I got to the marriage stage. Got married about a month ago, so that now. <laughs> now actually, have a story here in a minute about how my virtual assistants actually found her for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, time. So does anyone ever sometimes just feel behind? Whether it was the market was really good or you know the market's kind of slowed down. Anybody just feel behind? All right, well, I'm going to tell you a quick story on how I met Andrew Franklin. About eight years ago, um, I was with Kevin Kaufman, Fred Beaver, who were my first coaches in the industry. Met this guy named Andrew. In the back of the room, he goes, I am here today basically because I wanted to learn if I should use a CRM or not. And at the time, I was like, what's he talking about? And then later, I find out this dude's selling four, five, six, eight hundred homes, and he's like, should I use a CRM or not? <laughs> and at the time, my mouth just dropped it. I was like, Dad, we're using a CRM every day. We're only selling like 100 homes. <laughs> they have no CRM. It's selling 800. What are they doing differently? For whatever the number was. And what I learned was, is the difference between 100 and 800, the difference between 20 and 100, is he had more people in his organization. He had more team members. He had more assistants. At lunch, 
she was talking to his assistants. At lunch, we were the assistants for our team. And so I've learned a lot, and that's kind of what I tell people. If you feel behind, you feel like you're comparing yourself to someone, don't. Even the top of the top are an absolute chaotic mess. It's funny, Andrew messaged me the other day, he's like, I need a bio. Well, my virtual assistant was in my messenger and didn't tell me to respond. And so kind of the hypocrisy here is I missed the message, right? So we'll kind of talk about that here in a minute too. So seven things I learned over the past 10, 11 years in the business is that when times shift, right? I saw this happen in COVID, in any little shift in the market, the average business owner will greet and we'll just look around. The next thing I learned is instinctively we will still stick to our old patterns if our level of self-development has not changed. We might think that, oh, the market's kind of shifted a little bit more, I'm gonna leech in. But I'm gonna challenge you that if you look back over your last seven days, have you really changed from what you were doing a year ago, right? We've been in a good market eight to 10 years now. Our bodies have been wired to do things a certain way. And so we're gonna talk about how virtual assistants help me break that wiring. Number three is we need to scale up and not back. That doesn't mean just go dump money everywhere, but we have to still be scaling and not reduce. Uh, one of my mentors from back in the day, uh, Ben Kinney, said at a build conference I was at, he said, he said a line that was really impactful to me. He says, you cannot expense your way out of a recession. He's like, if you're making two deals a month, you're making 24 grand a month, you can't just go slash all of your expenses and then, you know, if you have, if you have 10 grand in expenses and you slash all 10, that doesn't change your income. Now, with that being said, watching expenses is still crucial, right? Cutting back in some things is still crucial, but we want to remember just going across the board, cut your credit cards up, stop leaving, stop investing in things isn't going to get you out of the recession. It might just reduce your income at the same time. So, but I do caveat that with it's still crucial to watch expenses and reduce in some areas. Number six, right now is kind of interesting. Our business actually grows in a market like this because we see people using cost reduction measures, which is the basis of virtual assistance. So we are busier than ever, so that's what we're about to dive into is kind of what we're seeing. And the last thing is, I believe a changing market equals more stress because you naturally will put more effort in, which naturally brings priorities change. But here, here's what I mean by that. A lot of people in here, you're gonna hear some really good ideas today, and you're gonna start writing a notepad, and you're gonna get out of here, and that notepad's gonna be full of things that you're gonna go do. The problem is, if you write down 30 things that you need to go do after this conference, what's going to happen tomorrow? Life, right? Life, kids, business partner, team members, whatever. So we have to get out of the mindset of how can I go implement those 30 things and I do them? And how can I get people around me to go implement those things? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. A lot of times solo agents really hate me because they think I'm talking at them. They think, oh, just because I'm not a big team. No. Even as a solo agent, even if you don't want a mega team, the things I teach today can still be done with assistance. So scaling with virtual assistance. Is it okay if I challenge you guys today? Can I push a little bit? If 30% of the room doesn't dislike me a little bit when I leave, I feel like I've failed. Because I'm going to really poor things I'm absolutely nuts, right? Especially when I share with you how I found my wife using virtual assistance. So. You're good. I will talk louder for you. No problem. So, do you want me to use it? Yes. All right. Yeah, use it. No problem. Cool. So, a lot of times people think I'm in the business of VAs. I actually loved your intro speaker because one of the things I learned is I don't have to cover that now. I am actually in the business of saving marriages, parental relationships, helping people live a life by design, and for so many more reasons. And so my pictures actually aligned with something he said. I didn't go on very many picnics. So this is one of, this is probably my biggest thing. I'm past the point of really working for money and it really changes my world and really gets me fired up when I see more of this. More families on vacation, out and about with their kids and family, not on their phone versus this. Because one of the things when I started in the business, my dad got started in real estate when I was 15. So we started at the exact same time. Unfortunately, my siblings got a lot of this. And it's, and it's something that tore us apart for about three to four years until we learned about leverage. So um, that's one of my big whys. Um, can we just start off with the assumption that virtual assistants work? Is that okay? 
If you guys have limiting beliefs behind that, I'm gonna give you my cell phone number. You can personally text me. I will work you through those. But right now, people like Andrew Franklin, virtual assistants work. So I'm not gonna try and argue if they work or not. They do. Now, with that being said, does anybody wanna know the failure rate of people working with virtual assistants? It's about 30 to 40%. Now, guess what? Is that shocking to some? No, what I have found though is usually it's not the virtual assistant's fault, it's whose fault? Yours, because you know my first 10 virtual assistants, you know how many are with me still today? None of them, because I failed every single one of them. I wasn't the leader, I didn't have the SOPs, I didn't take the time to train them, because the number one thing, whether it's an assistant in person, a virtual assistant, what's the number one thing that you think people say is I don't have enough Sometimes it's money, but it's usually I don't have enough time to train them. That's the number one thing. So we're gonna kind of try to get over that limiting belief too. The second thing is a lot of us have a disconnect in goals and reality. About 100 stages last year, we ran a survey on of everybody that had listened to me speak, and we asked, what would your average income wanna be? The average income of an agent said, I wanna make a million dollars a year. Does that surprise anybody? Nope, I wanna make a million dollars a year. How much do you think a business has to make Gross to net a million dollars a year. A lot more. Usually, if you, if you got really good margins, you got really good margins, you gotta at least make three to four million dollars, okay? So we have agents around the country that have this goal of I wanna make a million dollars a year net, which means you actually have to make about three to four, maybe even more. Now, to make three to four million dollars a year in real estate, do you think you can do that as a solo agent or a super small team all by yourself with no assistance? No, so, so we find that a lot of times people are judging themselves. They go, I wanna, why haven't I gotten to a million dollars a year? Why haven't I gotten there? And you just beat yourself up internally. The voice inside of you, you're constantly beating yourself up. But when you look at your schedule, you're not spending time recruiting people. You're not spending time hiring new talent. You're not building a bench. That's the number one thing Gary Keller taught me, build a bench, right? And so we just look at a disconnect. So it's really sad and it's something I battled with as I was, had goals with one thing, but my actions weren't showing that as well. Anybody ever hear comparisons, a thief of joy? It is if you're emotionally immature. So that's something my therapist, who we have a few mutual friends with, Dustin Randy said, Comparison is a thief of joy if you're emotionally immature. Comparison's great for me. When I first met Andrew Franklin, I looked at our two different businesses, I compared everything, I took all the notes, went and implemented. Next year we double, tripled our business just from what we were looking at. So comparison can be great as long as you don't take it um, the wrong way. So I, I say that because it's a really good room to learn from. So there's only two things in life that you can leverage. So now we're gonna get, is it okay if I get tactical for the last 20 minutes here with what we use VAs for? Cool. So there's only two things that you can leverage. Number one is personal activities, like finding a wife or a husband. And the second one is business activities, the day-to-day -day real estate task. So if we know we need leverage, why don't we? You've already answered some of it. But does anybody know why, at the root, most of us don't have a bigger team, more assistance? It's usually actually not money. Your Starbucks could cover more assistance. Your Amazon account, if you just got rid of it, would get you more assistance. At the root, why do we not have more people on our team? Anybody want to answer? Mindset? Yeah. Letting go of control, absolutely. So I actually believe when we got into this industry, and people hate me for this one, a lot of you, how many of you guys came from the corporate world then came into real estate? Corporate world or real estate? I didn't take that path, so take what I say lightly. I don't mean this as a jab. I believe when you go from the corporate world and when you go into real estate, you didn't take a lot of risk. And you're like, Justin, what are you talking about? I had a family to feed, I had kids to do. Well, guess what? The fact that you took a risk from corporate world to real estate means that you were in the top 1% of mindsets of believing in yourself. If you failed in real estate, you could have always have gone back to the corporate world and made money and made it work. When you got into real estate, how much did it cost to get your license? Thousand bucks, right? That's what it cost me. Thousand bucks, and I think my dad paid for it, thankfully. And it wasn't a 17, by the way. I didn't sell homes till 18, let's be very clear. Um, but a thousand bucks. So we got into this industry where there's not a lot of risk. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You can find brokerages that are 100 bucks a month, or give or take, so there's not a lot of risk. And so, but when we look around the industries, anybody ever started a restaurant before? 
Anybody ever start a restaurant, know someone that started a restaurant? I, I won't ever do it. But in that industry, it's a mindset thing. When you get into that industry, those owners, they don't think, well, I'm gonna be the cook, I'm gonna be the server, I'm gonna be the front of the house, I'm gonna be the back of the house, I'm gonna do stocking and inventory. Those people immediately go, I have to hire people, which is so different than what in real estate is. So I believe our industry has conditioned us to not take a lot of risk, take a lot of bets on ourselves when it comes to hiring leverage. So um, just the fact of knowing that allows us to be a little bit more inclined to do so. Um, so we already talked about it, it's rooted in money. Most of us also a lot of times don't hire because of a salary cap. I'm a huge sports fan. Um, by the way, I have extra Astros tickets because I'm a huge Astros fan too. Um, that if you guys text me for the slideshow, I'll, I'll, I'll raffle them off for no cost. So, um, so with that being said, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a few things here. How many in here believe at some point that someone in the industry says, I can't hire an assistant because I don't have the money? You guys think that's happened before? Okay, how many of your guys' buyers right now are like, I don't wanna buy a home because of the interest rate? and yet you're still trying to convince them it's a good idea. Because you're trying to convince them it's a good idea because at the root, you know that if they buy that home, it's a great investment still. Right, 8% is not a big deal over the last 30 years. They can refinance it later, let's get them into the home, let's get them investing. But how many of you guys own your own home? How many own your own home here? So someone convinced you at one time, maybe it was yourself, go take a bet on yourself, put some down payment down, go get a massive loan and if you default on the loan, what happens? <laughs> That's taken away from you, your family no longer has a home, and your credit's destroyed. Yet when I go, wait, you took that big of a risk and you always made it work. You always made your $2,000 mortgage payment. You always made your $3,000 mortgage payment because it was important to you, right? It was important to make that work because it was your kid's home. Now, if you can start to tie in everything together to go, my business is important to me because of what the first speaker said, what is your why? My business is so important to me because of my kids, I need to stop making excuses and I need to go hire leverage so that they can make the company money and it not all be on me. So that's been a big learning thing for me is I looked back and I had three properties that I had bought when I was a real estate agent that I had invested in and I kept pushing back of not hiring an assistant. I can't afford it, I can't afford it. And my coach just said, Justin, you keep buying investment properties and you find a way to make it work. So just have a little bit more belief in yourself when it comes to that. So um, we've kind of already went over a few of these things. Let's deep dive VAs. So here's how I did it. I, I strapped a GoPro to myself for about two and a half weeks, three weeks straight, and I video recorded my entire life. This is probably the reason I'm not with my ex anymore because she thought I was an absolute psycho. She's like, why are you wearing that to bed? Now, here's why I wore it to bed, okay? I, some of you guys are like, why did he wear this to bed? It's not for what you're thinking. OnlyFans was not around that long ago, right? But I wore it to bed because when I woke up the next morning, what do you think I did at 4.35 in the morning? By the way, I don't wake up that early now. I used to, but 4.35 in the morning. What do you think I did when I first picked up my phone? Scrolling social media, I was hard and interacting with all of my prospects. So Facebook was a huge part, as she mentioned, of my business. I hearted and interacted. And so when I got my first virtual assistant, what do you think the very first task, just because I was recording my day-to-day -day life, I figured out was to do? Social media, my VA wakes up every day now and goes through my posts and does interactions. And then she sends me a document that goes, hey Justin, Andrew Franklin just got married. Hey, Andrew Franklin just got a, had a baby. So I don't have to read through everything, but she also hearts and interacts with every single post. Now, a lot of you guys would never even know that that happens. Um, so just a kind of an example of this. So there, here are some of the crazy things that I learned. Now, I, I'm an absolute psycho, so take this with a grain of salt. I have a, I have a camera that points at my fridge that when it gets opened, it will send a list of what's missing to my virtual assistants. So like today, when I get home, there will be an Instacart order on the driveway because they can track my flights, they know where I'm going, it'll be ready to go into my house. Now again, some of this is extreme. Uh, the favorite one you probably learned is yes, I did put my virtual assistant on Tinder for me. It's how I found my wife. Because hey, at the time I was traveling 300 days a year on the road, 
and I couldn't be, I didn't want to meet 300 women in 300 different cities, even though that might have been cool, um, right? It wasn't for me. And so um, just kind of a, it's actually true, um, but it was kind of a fun story of what a VA did for me. So a lot of you guys are taking pictures of what, you're going to want to take pictures of the next like 30 slides, um, and then you're never going to look at them again, right? Just like the last conference you went to. So with that being said, um, I, I'm going to send it all to you guys. Um, so this is the website for you, sphererocketfiles.com. This, if I'm being honest with you, if you never wanted to hire Sphere Rocket to help you with virtual assistants, this is the playbook. It has every job description, every task list, every schedule that you would ever want to put a virtual assistant on. It's got 30 different job descriptions, 30 different job tasks. Take that. Um, I also included my last eight private masterminds that we do with those that make a million plus a year um, on there. So you guys can go in there, watch those um, all free of charge. There's no capture and you can just watch it. I'll never even know you watched it. So um, with that being said, I'll obviously send this to you guys as well. But our virtual assistants do anything. In 2019, I didn't have the company. I actually started the company about a month prior to COVID. I had no clue COVID was coming, but I, I will be very humble. This company was rocket launched partly because of COVID. It's not just because I just magically was a great guy or a great person. It made me grow up really fast because right when COVID happened, a whole bunch of the older generations, you guys all accepted what? Zoom. Zoom was accepted at an all-time rate, and so were virtual assistants because what you realized was is Amanda, your assistant down the street, was no further away than Sarah, your virtual assistant in the Philippines or in India or you know, in Brazil or in Colombia. Like It didn't really matter anymore. Now we had a global economy to choose from on talent. So, and I've always been at brokerages, Keller Williams at first, EXP now, I am an EXP agent now, um, that has always accepted a global presence. So it just made sense for me to do. And so with, with that being said, um, one of the things that I've been focused on a lot lately, um, right now we have like 30 of the Real Trends top 100 teams um, using our VAs. And so what we did is we sat down with a lot of them and we said, what are you using your top VAs for? And here's what we kind of got out of them. The number one thing they are reverting VAs to right now is open houses. Their virtual assistants are helping their agents run as many open houses. Our top teams mandate now that each agent runs eight to 10 open houses per weekend. Now, some of you guys are like, that's not possible. It's very possible with the help of virtual assistants. And so I'll kind of give you guys a rundown. Just, and again, if you go to SeerRocketFiles.com, this is all in there. But let me give you an example, an open house. My virtual assistant helps find me eight to 10 open houses. So if I was to go back into production again, I would go, what are the EXP agents around me? I live in Nashville, Tennessee. Who's around me that will let me hold their home open? So that's my virtual assistant's number one job, is to help me find eight to 10 open houses that I can sit open. Because a lot of agents, like we said, revert back to their old tactics. They're not doing it because they didn't have to five years ago. So I'm gonna do that. Cool, my virtual assistant now is gonna go, awesome. I'm gonna order a case of water and signs and everything to each house. So now when I arrive there, it is sitting there ready to go. At each house, I take in my iPad, I sit at each open house, every time someone signs in, my virtual assistants work Saturday and Sundays with me. We do have parts of our team work Saturday and Sundays. They are now, before I even step foot out of that open house, they are putting it into my CRM and starting all of the automations on that person. They also, about an hour or two later, will conveniently text that couple or whoever came in the door and say, hey, by the way, I have two other houses that I just looked up on the MLS, very similar to the open house we just ran. Would you like to take a look at those sometime too? And so we have a very systemized way to where you could show up to 10, now I'll be transparent, in this strategy we don't run signs like crazy to Alton open houses. We rely on the internet, which is where most people find open houses at, and we just go 10 to two, three to five, seven to nine. We're running open houses seven to nine right now and people are showing up because it's after their kid's soccer day. Again, a little bit extreme. Some of you guys will go, I will never do that. But even if it meant you going from one open house a weekend to three, right? That is a big thing that people are using their virtual assistants for right now. Um, second thing that people are using their VAs for is past client um, touches. So again, a lot of our teams have 100, 200, 300 past clients. 
every single month, our virtual assistants will call every single one of their past clients every single month. How many of you guys have called your past clients every single month? Never missed it. And if you raised your hand, you might be lying, right? But here's the thing. Some people are like, well, Justin, what does your VA say to your uh, customer? You know, what, like if I gave you a virtual assistant, what do they say to my past clients? Like, what do they say? Do you mind if I script play with you? Ring, ring. Hey, this is Sarah, um, the virtual assistant, which we wouldn't say VA, but just kind of help you here. This is the virtual assistant for the Justin Nelson team. I just wanted to call and say that we love you and wanted to make sure you're taken care of. And is there anything we can do for you? Hey, I appreciate it. Actually, what spoke to my neighbor yesterday? Perfect. Perfect. Hey, but what answer do you think we get most of the time? Good. You're good. So cool. Perfect. Now, the next month, what script do you think we use? The same one. And then the next month, and do you think it loses its effectiveness? Not really. We'll sometimes really change it up and go, and by the way, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Make sense, right? We really change it up. We, we as agents, we overcomplicate everything. We overcomplicate everything, and then we also, someone said it back there, we don't want to relinquish control. Well, guess what? The virtual assistant calling them once a month to say, hey, we love you, hey, Merry Christmas, is way better than you just never calling even if it does have a little bit of an accent, right? Now, here's the thing, you laugh. Last year, our team took 3,800 sales calls for people wanting to get VAs. What, was, what do you think the number one reason people had a limiting belief around VAs is I don't want a VA because they have a what? Well, you guys are in a melting pot in Houston. You guys are pretty inclusive of everything, but here's what I say, look around this room. How many accents do you think we have in here? How many people do we have from different countries that now live here? I basically say that if you will not consider virtual assistance because of an accent or because of walls across country lines, then basically look around this room and tell everybody in here that they're not gonna be successful in real estate and you would never allow them on your team. Most of you would look around and not do that, but you do it with virtual assistance. And do you guys wanna know why? It's because when we hear of people being hacked or scammed, where does it all originate from? Yeah, there's ways to prevent that, guys. So just know that I had the same limiting belief you did I'm in that situation. So um, referral groups, does anybody ever get referral groups and they get crushed because people just have fan clubs or whatever? Virtual assistants for me watch over 200 referral groups a day. It only takes us to get five or six more deals a year out of our VAs watching Facebook groups for us to ROI. Lead auditors, anybody have a team in here? Anybody on a team or own a team? Cool, generate leads, anybody pay for leads? Anybody not call the leads? That's what I did when my dad paid for them, right? That's, 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 that's what I did, right? But so a lot of teams are using lead auditors. That's a big thing being hired right now is virtual assistants calling is being like, hey, we dropped the ball. We're just giving you a call to see if you're still in the market. Um, recruitment screeners, and I'm not gonna go through all these because I wanna make sure we um, stay on time here. But here's the last thing that I'll kind of leave you guys with. Um, I did a case study last year, involved about 1,200 people that, in, that answered the questions. Do you all believe at one day in time that you want to own a big, big enough business, and some of you guys already do, you want to own a big enough business where you can afford a 60 grand a year salary? That was my thing. I, I'm like, I want to be like Andrew Franklin and have 32 assistants that all make really good money. Do you guys think at one day you want a business that can afford 60 grand a year in salaries? Absolutely. And so people ask me all the time, Justin, instead of spending a US 60 grand, how would you do it with virtual assistants? And these are the top seven positions hired in 2022 um, of all of our clients. Um, and this is kind of the order they go in. Most people will start with a personal assistant, move into social media, they'll move into video editing. By the way, I'm actually about to take my video editing staff and change their roles because of a new software. If you, if you need something to do all the editing for you, no questions asked for really cheap, Opus AI, O-P-U-S we no longer actually even really need VAs in the video editing world because of that AI. So OPUS will change your world if you're doing a lot of video editing. Um, client care manager, um, graphic design, marketing manager, accounting. You could have all seven of those virtual assistants on your staff full time, 40 hours a week for about $54,000 a year. So that is what unlocked and changed my life is when I figured out that piece. Now, let's be very clear, I'm not saying let's go fire our in-person assistants and replace them with virtual assistants. That will not be good. Let's not say that we're never gonna hire someone in the US again. That's also not good. 
but this allows us to bridge the gap a lot of times in those worlds. So here are the top three resources if you wanna use virtual assistants without using Sphere Rocket. These are a great way if you wanna go do it yourself, if you wanna try and bypass a little bit of money that we'll charge to do it all for you. These are three great resources. The only words of caution that I put on these with you is there is great talent on there, but they're rarely full-time. And they're also usually working for five to 10 people at the same time, which there's nothing wrong with that, but you're gonna feel like you're growing a company if you start to get a lot of VAs from these companies. You're gonna feel like you're growing a company that's all, a whole bunch of part-timers. And so just know that that's a downside. Um, I, in our company, we, called, we have something called Accelerator. Uh, if you guys want more details on that, you can go here. Um, we actually, as a thank you, and I might get emotional here, Andrew's changed my life. Like, when I, when I first met Andrew, I think we were watching Law & Order, single, eating Uber Eats. He, had, he didn't know Brittany. Like, so I learned a lot. I, yeah, yeah. Law and order. We were watching SUV reruns in Andrew's thing. And so Andrew has given me connections. Andrew has given me a lot of things um, that no one else has. And so Andrew is my sponsor at eXp. So I know this isn't an eXp event, but that's changed my life um, for sure. And so with that being said, um, if you guys can keep this private for me, we don't do this for anybody. Uh, we're willing to give 50% off all of our services. Um, in honor of Andrew and thank you and him for that. Um, so just scan that code, even if you don't need a VA for three years from now, if you scan that code, schedule a time, we'll honor that 50% discount um, for as long as you guys ever need. Again, you don't have to sign up tomorrow, you can sign up in a year from now. Just scan the code, pick a time, we'll take care of you at 50% off. We've never done that before. If you're a client in the room right now and you're like, I want 50% off, we'll take care of you. Um, and so with that being said, thank you, Andrew. My time is up. I'll be around today if you guys have any questions about virtual assistants. The only thing I want you to leave with today from me is just think about what leverage could do for your kids and your future so it's not all on you because like the first speaker said, it's hard. We carry a lot of things and it's a lot easier to carry when you got a bright, smiley looking team in the morning. So thank you guys.